Hello, passengers. This is your Chappie speaking, and welcome to Chappie's Wild Ramblings, the somewhat weekly show for your 100% recommended dose of Chappie for the month. And welcome today to the topic I'm going to talk about today, if I ever decide to say what the topic is, and uh, actually say it, you know. So, uh, today I want to talk about the director's cut, or the director's vision for a movie. And if you know me, you know I very much care about preservation of... uh, of the original, like, package or media, so, like, I've talked about how, uh, Netflix kind of changed Evangelion with, uh, the removal of Fly Me to the Moon, or how there's not, there's not a way to get, not an easy-ish way to get the original Final Fantasy VI, but if you want me to go into more detail about those two, I've got my previous two videos you can watch, but today I want to talk about, like, the uh, changed media are like two uh, quote unquote director's cuts uh, that I want to talk about today. And it's mostly, I can't really think of any other movie, but today it's going to be uh, Star Wars and Blade Runner. Because we all know that they both have like very much talked about director's cuts, even though the Star Wars isn't referred to as director's cut and are referred to as the special edition. So. I'm going to talk about how I like one, but not the other, and if you know me, you can tell which one I like and which one I don't necessarily like. So, let's start with Star Wars. So, I love Star Wars, especially the original trilogy. They're so great movies, and at the time, like all of these effects were achieved in such a practical and awesome way, and what do you do when you have, like, practical effects that still hold up you make them cg or at least that's what george lucas thought he had to do to his original trilogy so uh so if you know like star wars the only way to obtain these movies anymore like to buy or buy stream or whatever is to buy or stream the special editions of the original trilogy because uh, I'll get to this later, but if you've seen the special editions, you know they are, like, riddled with CG and alterations to the movie that are just bad. Like, uh, the scene before they enter the cantina, there's a stormtrooper riding, I don't know what it's called, but, like, riding the CG beast, and it's just distracting, which most of these changes are just distracting and unwanted. Um... So, uh, I, I think the best way to do this is just talk about things I hate about it, but uh, let's start with the absolutely obvious one, with Han Solo at the cantina, when he's talking to Greedo and is basically fed up with his stuff, he shoots him with his blaster, and because, no, Han Solo's the hero, they change very poorly to make it look like Greedo shot at Han first and did the weird, like... Uh, head movement, head dodge thing that is so, like, terrible and cheesy. And uh, when it comes to the first movie, I I think a lot of it is just, like, distracting CGI, uh, like, adding things. It's, it's not too bad in the first one, but uh, I'm trying to think of what else. But I can understand, like, cleaning up things, like, making the lightsaber effects look better, because they do do that, and it's, uh, I do, I do appreciate that, and so, uh, I think, I, I think it's just, like, a lot of annoying, distracting CGI that the first one has, but, uh, and the Empire Strikes Back, we'll just move on to that, uh, they, they kind of change, like, the scene with the... I was going to call him the Wonton. Oh, I can't... The Abominable Snowman. I can't think of its name. Uh, sorry about that. I'll probably throw it up on screen, but I can't think of it now. But in the original uh, Empire Strikes Back, you don't see the, the full creature. You only see parts of him, and it kind of makes it scary. But in the special edition, they don't. They just show the whole thing, and there's really not much that they hide for it. So, and other than that, there is a change I 
do like in it because it makes more sense in the the context of the whole series is well when they originally show the emperor emperor and then empire strikes back it's like this weird monkey dog creature that they kind of just threw together a bunch of pictures and whatnot to create it until they actually casted someone to play the emperor in the third movie so it makes more sense that they brought him back to re-record the empire stuff for that so that i do kind of appreciate that in a very small way but to be fair like a lot of a lot of empire stuff is very minor and like the changes that end up making me the most upset are all pretty much from return of the jedi and we'll just go into the cantina scene, which they add like these two CG singers instead of that blue elephant puppet guy. Um, and it's just, they look terrible and the song is pretty bad. And uh, also there's like stuff with Boba Fett. I don't remember the content. I think they removed him from the cantina or they added him in in. But uh, going to Boba Fett, I forgot to mention, like, in the changes, they redub his lines with uh, with the actor who plays Django in the prequels, because in the prequels we find out that Boba Fett's actually a clone of Django, which I don't appreciate it. I liked him more as, like, this bounty hunter and, like, not having the ties to the previous, but... So, other than in the cantina, or the cantina scene in general on Tatooine, they add a mouth to the Scarlet Pit, which I didn't really care for. I like more of the, just the open pit, because it makes it, because I, I don't know if it's still canon that Boba Fett is, escapes the Scarlet, but it makes it seem less likely with the mouth uh, that he can escape from it, but it's minor. So... Other than that, like, the change I hate the most in The Return of the Jedi is at the very end with, uh, when you see all the Force ghosts, and in the place for Darth Vader or Anakin Skywalker, instead of, like, the old man who does, like, the face stuff for Darth Vader, uh, it's, uh, instead they replace it with Hayden Christensen, and I hate hate this it implies so much that i don't like so people all it's like well oh the force ghost can be whatever they want so then why would obi-wan choose to be uh, choose to be old man obi instead of going to ian mcgregor and like same for yoda i just i i don't like it so i i I think i've talked enough about like these special edition changes and uh Oh, there's a lot more I'm sure I didn't mention. Like, people didn't like how they added Luke Skywalker screaming when he jumps off after losing his hand because it undignifies him, and I have to agree with that. And a lot of these they've changed through the different releases of the special edition. So, who... And it just, it's more changes every time, like, maybe, and sometimes they'll fix the CG, but in a long time, I, I don't care for it. I'd much rather watch the theatrical versions, which... Uh, you can't really, well, they're not, non-exist, no, not non-existence, there's way to watch them, but it involves, like, tracking down some possible, most likely worn out VHSs, or getting an entire Laserdisc setup, so you can watch the Laserdisc disc versions, and I know at during one of the releases of the special editions, they released uh, DVD cuts of the theatrical cuts, but they were like so poorly ripped from the laser discs that they're just awful. And other than that, like, I, it's like George Lucas said, like this was his, this is what he wanted from the beginning. But I just, I don't know, it, like, I, I. I I don't want to be sound like this kind of fan that I think Star Wars is at its best the farther it is from George Lucas. I'm probably going to get some hate for saying that, but it's true because I because if you look at like the original trilogy besides the the first one is still a masterpiece and he directed that, but you look at uh Empire and it was directed by someone else and uh, people absolutely love that movie and 
I think he co-directed or someone co-directed uh, Jedi with him. But I don't. But just saying how I think uh, George Lucas, maybe it's better far away again. I'm going to get freaking crucified over this. But uh, I I don't necessarily care for the prequels. They're just all right to me. And again, some unpopular opinion, I much prefer the sequel trilogy over the prequel trilogy. So I'm going to stop talking about this because I can feel the knives against my back already. But I, he, he, he claims like this was his vision, but I can't I find it hard to believe you like were able to achieve these magnificent eff- effects with models and props back in the 70s. And I can only appreciate them and remaking them CG just takes a lot out of it. But uh, let's move on to the other movie I want to talk about. And it's uh Blade Runner, but this just almost feels like it's under entirely different circumstance. So, uh, Blade Runner isn't the most popular sci-fi series out there. I I, I kind of I I mean I didn't really I, I think I've always known about it, but I didn't really care until Blade Runner twenty forty nine was coming out, and I I love both these movies. But throughout the years, Blade Runner has had so many different cuts of the movie starting with there's a theatrical cut and then like a European theatrical cut then there's the director's cut and then finally the final cut which didn't come out until 2007 and at this point I've only seen uh, the final cut and the recently I watched the theatrical cut just for like research on this but I've read pretty much about what how each version is different from each other so i'll probably focus on like uh the three main versions the theatrical the uh the director and the final so um and again it's all essentially the same movie but i guess so in star wars in some regard but uh, the the changes are less uh okay i'm rambling 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 rabble 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 But, um, so I'll just start in the theatrical cut, like this, like the studio intervened a lot in this cut. They like felt like Deckard needed an inner, uh, inner monologue, which made the movie more nor like uh, new are like, sorry, I can't speak today. And at the end of the movie, they kind of chalk on like, let's make this a happy ending. The hero and the heroine run off together and Ridley Scott did not like this version, and so I believe in 1994, uh, let's move on to the director's cut, which he still didn't have like his full uh, full directive freedom, and they uh, they removed. Uh, uh, they removed the voiceover and the forced happy ending and made it like more uh, and uh, made it more open to interpretation, like what their fate would be. And this uh, this edit entered a change, which I know some people aren't the biggest fan uh, fan of, like the whole is Deckard a replicant thing with the whole unicorn dream and the unicorn origami at the end, which I. I I'm honestly, it could be more ambiguous than more, than more on the, on the nose with like it, but, and then finally not again, not until 2007, which comes the true director's cut, but you can't, apparently he wasn't allowed to call it another director's cut. So then you get the final cut, which then is Ridley Scott's like true artistic freedom on this, which to be fair, not a whole lot has changed between the two and i read that the unicorn dream sequence is a bit longer and they added in like the more violent takes of the movie and i I really enjoy this cut it's very good like i i mean i think kind of the voiceover takes away from some scenes i kind of like these the long silent moments with the striking music so you can just take in the scenery of things uh, and just like being able to read what he's thinking and not necessarily be told out but 
Like now I come to the point like why is one one cut okay but the other cut isn't? Uh, but I think a lot of it again with like Star Wars besides episode 1 they had different directors. He wasn't full directing on this. So yeah, you could meant like this was his directorial version of the movie compared to theirs, but I'm talking about Star Wars, by the way. I sorry if I didn't make that clear, but I, I don't know. It's like I, I feel like with the Blade Runner Final Cut, it's finally the movie Ridley Scott wanted, where George Lucas wanted Star Wars to use the newest technology possible, even though it upset fans. And I I, th- I think that's kind of where they differ, and it's where. George Lucas wanted to go with technology where Ridley Scott just wanted to keep his vision the way he wanted it because to be fair with uh, Ridley Scott and Blade Runner a lot of it was changed due to due to studio stuff Uh, but just okay I think I got what I wanted to say off my chest I did my ramblings and uh, and I talked about Star Wars and the oh uh, one one more final point that I wanted to make is because there's technically like special editions of the orid uh, of the prequel i shouldn't say original the prequel trilogy or at least i'm not sure what they do to like uh episodes two and three but in the first one it's one change i honest will honestly will take mostly because i don't care enough about these movies when i rewatch them but uh in the original cut of episode one they had yoda as a puppet but it is awful when compared to the amazing work that Jim Henson did for Yoda in the original trilogy so but in episode two and three they replace it with CGI which is fine for Yoda in that context so in the first movie in their special edition they make Yoda uh, they make Yoda CGI and I think it just looks better than that god-awful puppet from that but uh, I hope you're all having a nice day today, because I'm having a pretty nice day, and so I am so terrible at ending these things, so uh, take care of yourself, uh, and know that you are loved. Uh, this is Chappie, your pilot, signing off.